friends, Leo with the Irish Zombie Nation. We also have Scotty Thu, aka Coles. Coles Hole. There we go. This is your introdu introduction, if I can speak, your introduction to Scotty's Garage. Coles Hole. Insert your own joke right there. And there's actually two jokes right there if you get the insert thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is our Q&A video. These are the, uh, I don't know, what was it, two weeks ago? We were out camping. I said we would answer some questions if we got enough of them. And we got more than enough. We actually are not going to be able to answer all of them. I had like 35, something like that. We're only going to choose 10 that we wanted to answer the most. And uh, we're going to choose, at the end of answering these, we're going to choose one of our favorites. And that person is going to receive an Irish Zombie Nation swag pack as well as a knife. I don't know what knife it's going to be yet. Uh, it might be a neck knife, might be a fixed blade, might be a folder. I'm not sure. It's going to be a surprise. So let's get right to it. And some, you know, some of these questions, Scotty's going to answer uh, just by himself. Some I'm going to answer by myself. And uh, some will answer together. So I've got them written down on my little notepad right here. The first one is, what was your worst camping trip? Scotty's going to answer that one. And that question is from Steve Garfu, Garfau, I, I'm gonna butcher names, guys. But anyway, Scotty, what's your worst camping trip ever that you can think of? My worst camping trip is Leo and I went down to uh, Mark Twain National Forest, and we stopped by a grocery store, which our main nominus, and uh, I got some food, and I got there, and him and I started drinking and next thing I know I started getting a migraine, I got sick, I get basically got food poisoning. And to me that was horrible. It ruined like the whole day and everything. And you weren't happy on the hike. No. <laughs> they still went hiking on that on that yes. trip. <laughs> After I was had a migraine and sick. Yeah. Alright, so that's uh, Scotty's worst camping trip. You've already seen mine, there's another video on that one. All right, number two, during any outdoor activities, have you ever seen anything leading you to believe Sasquatches live in your area? Uh, that question is by Greg Stone. Greg, thank you, and thank you also, uh, Steve, for the last question. All right, I'm going to answer that one, the Sasquatches, outdoor activities. Uh, yeah, when I go hiking, I live in a major city. We live in a major city, and, you know, we don't always get to go far away to uh, do hiking things and or hiking different trails and such, so some I hike around the city. And man, some of the people <laughs> on these trails, if you think Walmart's bad, uh-uh. In the middle of the summer when it's 100 degrees out and there's like a 300-pound dude with his chest all hairy hanging out, uh, coming down the trail at you, you might want to take a picture, send it to National Enquirer or something. <laughs> you might win a prize. So, uh, great. Thank you for that question. Number three, if time and money were no problem, where would you take a week off in the U.S. for a camping trip of a lifetime? Uh, we're both going to answer that one. And that question is from Mike Fabia Outdoors. Thanks, Mike. You want to go first? You want me to go first? I'll go first. All right. Uh, I think the Dakotas. I've heard the Dakotas are so beautiful. The mountains, the scenery, everything like that. And that's where I would want to go. Right on. You know, especially during like fall and stuff like that. You know, before it gets cold and the snow and everything like that. Yeah. I'd love it. Right on. All right. For me... Uh, place I would want to go would be the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. I would, however, like to first depopulate Colorado. If I can get the people out of Colorado and just go hiking in the mountains the way it used to look when there wasn't a million people on the trails, then that's where I, I would like to go. I really love the mountains. I've said many times that's where I would like to retire to. Uh, I just I love it better than any other environment. So the Rocky Mountains, most likely in Colorado, is where I would want to go. Uh, all right. Number four, when you leave your wife to go for a weekend to play slash drink in the woods, is she A, glad to see you go, or B, do you have to pay her off, i.e. give her the credit card to go shopping, do, la do the laundry for a week, etc.? Uh, that question is from do do Doc, Doc David Sr. I don't know, D-O-K-K-David Sr. So I'm going to call you David. I don't know what the Doc thing is. Uh, anyway, do I have to, I'm sorry, I almost forgot what I'm asking here. Uh, do I have to, is she glad to see me go? Yeah, she's always glad to see me go, but she misses me eventually, uh, you know, after a day or whatever. Uh, but do I have to pay her off? No, I don't have to pay her off. This is very simple. All I do for the week prior to uh, going camping is I annoy the hell out of her, like to the point where she wants me to go away for as long as possible. Now, uh, just on her butt all the time, complaining about this, I'm upset about that, uh, just poking at her, do whatever, just annoy the hell out of her. And then she's like, dude, go on the camp trip, get out of here, get away from me. 
Uh, and she also knows I need to do that periodically, it's just to de-stress and stuff. So I don't have to pay her off, I just have to annoy the hell out of her. So thank you, David, for that question. Okay, moving on to number five. What's the best advice you've ever received? Uh, Scotty's gonna answer that one, and that one is by Corvo Negro. I also wanna mention that, uh, I forgot to mention this in the beginning, is uh, if, they, if you guys ask more than one question in the comment for you know your questions, if you ask three questions in one comment, we're only gonna answer one of them just to save some time. And uh, yeah, that's, you know, but later on maybe I'll go in the comments and I'll answer all of your questions, including the people we didn't get to this time, but for now we're just gonna break it down to one question per person. All right, the person that asked, what's the best advice you've ever received? is Cuervo Negro. Cuervo Negro does the music for my uh, motorcycle videos, the ones that I've done involving the bike, that uh, kind of uh, Western style music that you hear in the intro is from Cuervo Negro. He's also the composer of all of uh, James, Junkyard Fox, all of his music over on his channel. Also, big shout out to Cuervo Negro. His music is now on Spotify. I'll put a link in the description box below. If you're on Spotify, you can go check out his, uh, I think he has two albums on there right now. I know Dustin Bones is on there. And if you like like methodic Western music, it's good stuff, man. It's really good. So uh, anyway, Scotty's now going to answer, what is the best advice you've ever received? Best advice I've ever received was from my grandfather, uh, God rest his soul. He looked at me one day and said, if you don't learn something every day, it was a waste of a day. Pretty and funny. that's what I keep in my head every day I go to work or go riding my motorcycle or go hiking or something. Figure something out, learn something new. If you don't know, we got the internet. You can find it out. I mean, just research it, right, look it up. That's what channels like mine are for, you know? They entertain you a little bit, but you also learn something every now and then. All right, Cuervo Negro, thank you, my friend. Very uh, much appreciate that. All right, number six. If you could bring one famous person or band, dead or alive, out camping with you, who would it be and why? Both of us are gonna answer this. And uh, this question, actually, the first person that asked us this question was James from the Junkyard Fox. But then another person asked it, so I'm gonna throw him in there as well, uh, Jerry Riley. Uh, so, Jerry and James, thanks. James and Jerry kinda sounds like an ice cream. <laughs> ice cream maker. Uh, ben and Jerry's. Anyway, if you could bring one famous person or band, a uh, whole band, dead or alive, out camping with you, who would it be and why? You go first. All right, I'm gonna go first. For me, it would be who I have tattooed, nope, not on this arm, over on this arm right here. Uh, he's my favorite author, he is the gonzo uh, journalist himself, Hunter S. Thompson. He is dead, shot himself in the stomach, I don't know what year that was, back in the early 2000s or something. Uh, he wrote Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, The Rum Diaries, uh, just so many books. He was a big figure in the 60s, and he was... Uh, big into drugs, and I used to be big into drugs. I don't know if you do that or not, but watch some of my older Q&A videos. Uh, I've got some stories to tell you there, but man, going camping with Hunter Thompson, I think that would be an experience that I would either never forget or forget immediately, <laughs> just from what we're doing. So that's my answer to that. Uh, Scotty, who would you take camping? Dead or alive, I, man? I think Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan, all right. Yeah, I mean, come on. He, at one point, he ruled Nine or like eighty percent of the population of the earth. Yeah, that would be and, interesting. Yeah, I mean, he was brutal and everything like that, and hopefully he killed me while I was talking to him. <laughs> right? But yeah, I, I loved it. Yeah, just don't bring your girlfriend or anyone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just bring no females. Yeah, no females when it comes to Genghis Khan. All right, uh, James and Jerry, thank you for those questions. Number seven, any funny poop stories? I'm going to answer that one, and that is from FinDog27. All right, FinDog, here is my answer to that. Uh, one of our winter camping trips, I think it was a seven-day camping trip? Was that, was that where we had the bucket? All right. There was a, there's a video on that if you want to see our seven-day winter freezing rain and ice uh, camping trip. You can look that up. Also, um, we got a blooper, blooper reel. Yeah, we have a blooper reel for that, too. But we found this bucket. There was a bunch of trash in this ravine, and there was a five-gallon bucket. And we used that bucket. What we did was like here's a bucket i'll just give you an example i'm not going to turn it upside down because there's trash in here but you know people use these type of buckets they put like a seat up here and they poop in the bucket in a bag or something that's not what we did we instead cut a hole in the bottom right here flipped it upside down over a cat hole that we dug and then we sat here pooped through the bucket and into the hole but when people didn't realize that so when they saw it they thought that i was just pooping in the bucket 
in the wrong way. Like I was just pooping right on the flat part of the bucket, but that wasn't the case. Uh, I took some pictures of that of me sitting there looking all stoic and intelligent, like reading a book with a cup of coffee with my pants down. And uh, the, the funny part about this is later on, my wife works at a hospital and she, uh, she works in an office area in this hospital. And so I was at work and I was going to get off early and I had to go up to see her anyway. So I printed off a copy of that picture. Actually, after I photoshopped a little bit, I photoshopped, I'll just put a picture of what it looks like up on the screen here in a second, but I photoshopped a little like speech bubble and then I put her picture up there with hearts around it and I said, whenever I poop, I think of you, right? Uh, and here's what that looks like, so. All right, so there's the picture, you saw that. What I did is I took that picture, I put it in a uh, manila envelope, I sealed it up, I wrote top secret, eyes only, uh, to Danielle Hardesty, all that on the front, making it look all like, you know, came from the CIA and stuff. I came into her work when she was on her lunch break and I dropped it off with the front desk lady and asked them to give it to her so I wouldn't be there. I split. And then, of course, she came in and she's like, what is this? And she opens it up and she's doing it in front of her coworkers. And there you go. So everyone got to see me with my bare ass down on this bucket uh, with the. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So that <laughs> that is my funny poop story. I really enjoy that. So. Uh, all right. Moving on from there. Thanks, Finn Dog, though. That's that's a good one. That was. Yeah, all right. Number eight. How did you meet Scotty? We'll both answer that. Alfonso. Casillas, Casillas, if I pronounce that properly. All right, how did I meet you? Uh, through a mutual friend that worked at a coffee shop. You were working at a coffee shop. Right. I was a cook at a retirement community. And and he was a cook there before he came to the coffee shop. Yeah. yeah. that's And you know who that person is? Clint. Remember Clint? Clint Nashville. Yeah, that, that's who, uh, he was working at this coffee shop, and this was in 1997. So I've known him for 23 years. And uh, 19, really? yeah, was, yeah, was, yeah, I moved here in January 97. Yeah, I know, wow. it's been a long time. Too damn long, you oh. All right, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. Um, yeah, so I was just, we were on our break, and he came up to see his friend, and then met him, and then I met another guy that I knew for over two decades, Rosie. He'd moved away now, uh, but we, all four of us, were best friends for 20 years. Uh, yeah, so that's how I met Scotty, through a mutual friend working at a coffee shop. Back when, uh, you know, the whole 90s coffee thing was big, that was a, the cool, hip thing to do when you're young. All right, thanks, Alfonso, for that question. Number nine, what is the best whiskey you have ever drank, and what is one you wish you would have never bought but drank it anyway because, hey, it's still whiskey? <laughs> that question is by Trenda Neff, or Neef. Sorry if I'm butchering names here, guys. I'm not good with that stuff. So we're, bo we're both going to answer that one. Best whiskey you've ever drank and one you wish you would never bought but still drank it. You want to go? You go. Okay. okay. My, the best whiskey I've ever drank is Lambay Single Malt Irish Whiskey. And I'm not saying that because I'm a wine distributor, wine and liquor distributor, and that's one of the ones we sell. Uh, but I don't normally, I'm not rich, so I don't get to normally buy a lot of expensive whiskeys. But through my job, I've been able to taste a lot of them. And that is one I actually bought, even though it was pretty expensive. Uh, it comes from the island of Lambay. It's a small uh, wildlife refuge in Ireland, off the coast of Ireland. And they uh, distill everything there, and they put the barrels up. I don't know where, but they talk about how the seawater does something to... I don't know, but the stuff is delicious. So, if you get a chance to try out Lambay, I'll put a picture up of what the Lambay bottle... Actually, I think there's a review of Lambay on my channel, so go find that as well. Uh, worst... The worst whiskey I've ever had, but I don't know. Uh, should I say, like, should I say the worst, like, low-grade or the worst high-grade? Oh, you're going to go low-grade. I'll go... The worst high-grade whiskey that I ever had... And I'm going Irish again, was Sexton Single Malt Irish Whiskey. And oh. Remember that? We tried that on that camping trip. <laughs> yeah, it came in that cool gothic, like, like Pentagon-shaped bottle. Uh, and, yeah, it had a cool story about it, but, man, that tasted like ass. That was some bad whiskey. Uh, and I'm not including Moonshine as whiskey. I don't consider that whiskey. So, yeah, that was the worst one. But I think you still drink it. It's still whiskey, so what can you do? All right, your turn. Best okay. one you've ever had. Uh, I really don't buy a lot of... Whiskey, I just usually find a whiskey I like and stick to it somewhat. And as broke as I am, <laughs> somewhat, I'm usually 10 high. But uh, I, I would expensive. say uh, <laughs> one good whiskey I bought is uh, Tin Cup. That was a good whiskey. And the worst is McCormick. <laughs> oh, yeah. That thing gave me hangovers left and right every time I drank it and that's why I decided to go to 10 high and it but I'm sorry people say oh yeah it's good whiskey but 
Not to me. No, McCormick. It, don't, it doesn't treat me right. McCormick is horrible. That's it's lighter fluid. That the colored brown is disgusting. <laughs> All right, uh, that who went that one? That was by Trenda Neff. Thank you, Trenda. Appreciate that. All right, last question, guys, so we can wind this down. Hands down, what is your favorite piece of gear and why? We're both going to answer that question because we both are gear people. We like gear. We like camping gear and hiking gear and motorcycle gear and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, and this is all about the outdoors. We're not answering anything about motorcycles today. Uh, that question is by Jeremiah Johnson. Thank you, Jeremiah, for that question. So, you want to go first or me? Okay. All right. Hands down, what is my favorite piece of gear and why? It would have to be my Dream Hammock Darien. Uh, you guys know I'm a hanger. I love hammock camping. Not big on sleeping on the ground. Well, if I have to, but my Dream Hammock Darien is the only way that I can get like a straight 10 to 12 hours of sleep without waking up and be in the outdoors and be completely comfortable. Asymmetrical. I just, I love everything about that. Double layered, uh, the bug net, the materials, it's light. It's, you can just throw it up in seconds. Uh, I just love that. So if you guys are in the in the market for a hammock and you want to spend a pretty penny, Dream Hammock Darien. There's many other models. I went to Darien. You can go higher. You can go a little bit lower. But Dream Hammock Darien, without a doubt, because of how comfortable it makes me when I'm sleeping in the woods, is my favorite piece of gear. Okay, uh, mine is a hammock tarp, and it's I'm bad with memory names. I, I know the name because I have the okay. same tarp. It's the UGQ Winter Dream. It's the same one you've seen me use when we go out camping. We have the yeah. same tarp. We have different hammocks with the same tarp. That that thing is the best thing. It keeps me dry. Keeps me away from the wind. It. I mean, we've had what sixty mile an hour winds. I don't know if we had sixty. It was well, pretty about, bad. About, four, about forty. Yeah, I think somewhere in there. I don't know. Maybe it was. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. bad. We had forty mile an hour winds and thing just held up strong. Kept the rain out of snow, ice, whatever. We. Got, done. The, got the doors on it. Yeah, got the doors. Keep the wind. From, if it's going crossways on your, I love it. It's the best thing I've ever purchased. No. And it's not cheap, but no. it's worth it. No. Most definitely, especially because tie downs. You can force mode it. You can, you know, kind of like make it look more like a tent. Yeah, it's yeah great. A, lot, a lot of options with that sucker. So, all right, guys, that's the ten questions. Now we need to choose one of them, one that we enjoy answering the most. Dun, dun, dun. I'm torn between a couple. I mean, I really enjoyed yeah, the last okay. question. I enjoyed the whiskey question. The famous person question was really good. I really like that one. Uh, <laughs> the poop one. Yeah. All right. All right, the poop one, because that, that that's a funny story. I enjoy that one. It always brings a smile to my face. So the winner of the Irish Zombie Nation Swag Pack plus Random Cool Knife is FinDog27. Fin dog, thank you, sir. Oh, All right, no. <laughs> Fin dog. What I need you to do now is email me at irishzombienation.com. Easy one to remember, right? Or no, at gmail.com. I should say it right. Yeah. Irishzombienation yeah. at gmail.com. It's on the screen right now. Email me there. Send me your uh, your address, and I will send that packet off to you ASAP. I hope you enjoy all the stuff in there. There's going to be a uh, different variety of Irish Zombie Nation swag patches, some coasters, a pen. Scotty, did you put that pen on? See that yep. pen right there? A little Irish Zombie Nation pen. You're going to get one of those. Uh, uh, the knife. Coasters. Whatever. Yeah, I got coasters. Yeah, I got coasters. You're going to get some coasters. Uh, you're going to get a variety of little Irish Zombie Nation stuff, including the very much sought after original so on Irish Zombie Nation patch. Not the morale patch. You're going to get the morale patch too, though. Just basically anything I got with the logo on it, you're going to get. So. Fin dog, thanks again, and thanks to everyone that asked us questions. And if we didn't answer yours in this video, I apologize. Maybe we'll do another video and answer the ones we didn't answer this time. But uh, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for joining us. Like, oh, do you like Scotty's stuff? Look at all this stuff, man. Look at that. That's some cool stuff. <laughs> I love this stuff, man. All right, Scotty and I are now going to have some uh, tin high. There you go. Thanks again for joining us, guys. Like, share, subscribe, comment down below if you got anything else you want you want to say. And until next time, we'll see you around the fire. So I want to check.